This is the Ahsoka Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Star Wars Ahsoka Part 5, Shadow Warrior. We're part of a legacy. But my part of that legacy is one of death and war. But you're more than that. Because I'm more than that. You are more Anakin, but more powerful and dangerous than anyone realized. Is that what this is about? If I am everything you are... You've learned nothing. Don't say that. Back to the beginning. I gave you a choice. Live. die no incorrect Welcome back, fellow Rebels, to TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Star Wars Ahsoka Part 5, Shadow Warrior. Ooh, what an episode. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Rebels. I am your other host, John. And rounding out this group, I am Chopper. (laughs) I just love that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we have a brand new Chopper sound for this week um, to cover over Chris whenever he gets anything wrong. (laughs) Uh, or just said something inappropriate yes so expect to hear quite a lot of (laughs) this episode excellent excellent chris uh hopefully not because that takes a long long time to edit in (laughs) (laughs) good stuff welcome back everybody yes uh on to uh, a very interesting episode of star wars ahsoka part five shadow warrior where we have effectively an episode that uh that reconciles Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka. Yes. Mm. Big one, also shown in the cinema, also 50 minutes long, and written and directed by Dave Filoni. Excellent stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pretty epic, actually. Yep. Took me right back to the 80s. (laughs) And uh, being a eight-year-olds i guess yeah my, my nephew uh sent me a message after watching the episode saying oh my god i feel like i was 10 years old again i was like you're only 23 <laughs> i feel like i was 10 years old that's 30 years ago <laughs> 37 years ago <laughs> if this is what we can expect from the heir to the empire filoni film can you imagine that type of cinematography that type of script mm-hmm. storytelling story like those characters coming full circle after yeah. what? How many seasons of Clone Wars yeah. and uh, Rebels and yeah. like? Filoni's playing the long game, and he Definitely. like even beyond that. I was just, this for me. Oh, there's just one shot, right? And it was just. Oh, do you remember the one of the very first posters for Episode One, uh-huh. which was a young Anakin yeah. with his shadow? Yeah. Being the of Darth Vader, yes, that shot that Filoni reproduced in the smoke, mm-hmm. I was like, "That's my now. That's that's a version I have. That's as iconic for me as that poster of Annie Annie <laughs> back in the day yeah. for Episode One." Yeah. I'm like, "Okay, that's old Anakin and smoke and flashes and yeah." So just cool. absolutely so, so good cool. we have so much to discuss as well because absolutely some of it i will need your clone wars expertise to kind of <laughs> kind of illuminate one or two bits we'll help i know about, i know the name snips we'll yeah try and help yeah. more that was great as well with snips uh to yeah. be honest and uh i forgot that it was uh, you know snips was also um carried from the last episode, uh, you do hear Anakin sort of talking to Snips. 
uh, as well. The first word he said to yeah. her in the in the end of uh, of episode four, uh, part four, yep. um, is "Hey, Snips, didn't expect to see you here so soon." Uh, so, so we really good. are going to go into our spoiler filled discussion. Lots of spoilers yes. there in our pre discussion, but we would like you to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't subscribed yet. Pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com where you can subscribe to anywhere that you listen to podcasts uh, to our main podcast feed for TV Podcast Industries. There is a course of feed just for all of our Star Wars coverage, which includes all of the Bad Batch, uh, the first two seasons, and, um, of course, all of our episodes of Ahsoka as well. If you want to get in contact with us, you can also email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with your thoughts on any of the episodes of Ahsoka. And coming up later this episode, we have the fifth question in our Star Wars Ahsoka Cantina quiz. We certainly do, yeah. fellow rebels and quizzes, if you're listening in. Absolutely. Uh, yes, our fifth question is available to for you to scribble down and to answer at the end of the series to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Exactly, exactly. But I've already mentioned the writer and director of this episode are both Dave Filoni. His first uh, theatrical release as well, and the first theatrical release for any Disney Plus show. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Theatrical? It was released in cinemas across America. Wow. And uh, I think Empire Magazine did a uh, special showing in the UK as well in theatres. So, yeah. Nice. If you went along to see it in the cinema, we'd love to hear your thoughts. I've, I've heard a couple of people commenting on it saying uh, it was really good fun to be with a big audience looking forward to this episode and what they saw on screen. So uh, if you if you got to go and see it, uh, fellow rebels, uh, get in contact with us. Let us know what, what yeah, happened. Absolutely. How, how, whether it was good, good or not. Stuff. I'm sure it was good. <laughs> good <laughs> stuff. I mean, it was like when they re-released the original three, four, five, and six uh, in the cinemas. And I was like well, straight yeah. back there. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. But unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to go to the cinema to watch this one. But John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Star Wars Ahsoka Part 5 Shadow Warrior? Sure. Hera Syndulla arrives on Cetos, where she finds no trace of Ahsoka nor Sabine Wren. Alerted by a noise at the Henge, she finds only Huang holding Sabine's helmet, recalling that he had told them both to stay together. While the X-Wings sweep the nearby forest for Sabine and Ahsoka... Jason Sindula senses lightsabers clashing above the noise of the crashing waves. As he senses Ahsoka's presence in the world between worlds, and reveals to his mother Hera and her yang his own connection with the Force. Hera orders the X-Wings to begin sweeping the coastline for Ahsoka. In the world between worlds, Anakin explains to Ahsoka that he had been watching her through the Force and deduces that her loss with Balin's skull, is partially due to her unresolved guilt over the events that drove them apart. He is here to continue their training, and gives her the choice to live or die, as his lightsaber ignites. As they duel, Ahsoka has the bridge taken from beneath her, and falls into a battle where she relives fragments of her past with Anakin during the Clone Wars. But Ahsoka doesn't want to simply be a Jedi of war, and refuses Anakin's teachings, determined to not be held to the legacy of her master's past, nor those of his masters from before. Her refusal leads to another duel between them, which Ahsoka wins and chooses to live, accepting that she wasn't part of the reason for Anakin's downfall. Ahsoka is recovered by Hera's crew after being picked up on Chopper's scanner. Once she has recovered, she uses her powers to learn that Sabine is with Balin's skull, as she contemplates what to do, she sees the pergol overhead and realises there is another way to find the pathway to Peridia. At the same time, Hera is contacted by Mon Mothma, who informs her that New Republic forces are en route to take her and Ahsoka into custody. As a New Republic fleet led by a Captain Gerard arrives, X-Wing pilot Carson Teva is tasked with holding them up as Ahsoka force connects to the pod of Pergil to get them to take her and her yang to Ezra and Sabine. Sindula, Jason and Chopper stay behind, with Hera likely to be stripped of her rank at the hands of the Senate for the unauthorised mission, as the New Republic defence fleet watches the large pod of Pergil jump to hyperspace with Ahsoka and her yang. Destination unknown, but better than sitting around doing nothing. Well, that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like literally flying blind. Yeah. 
Yeah, love it. Love it. We're going to go into our top points from uh, this episode, our top three saber points this time, as we always do with Ahsoka. Let's start off with saber point number one. <laughs> And we heard lots of sabers in this episode, but we're going to start off with an unhappy Republic. Yes, we are. Because, yeah, I suppose when you abscond with a, um, uh, a squadron? Yeah, it would be. It's Rogue Squadron. So, yeah, a squadron of X-Wings. Uh-huh. Um, a- a- along with a general going AWOL. Yeah. Because she may be uh, part of the New Republic, but she may have been quite high up. She's still a general. She still has a... A committee to respond to. Hera uh-huh. went AWOL, along with a lot of people. So, yeah, like, she's she's on the hook. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's she true. certainly yeah. is. I mean, dare I say it, the Senate Oversight Committee possibly is a little micromanage at this point. <laughs> they have a bit too much oversight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or they, they have an oversight, uh, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, it is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because... She's a general, so you would think she would have sort of agency to be able to deploy aspects of the fleet as long as it's agreed mm-hmm. within the command. But as such, the oversight committee is definitely unhappy. I do like yeah, as like well. they did say no. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but it, 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 I mean, you know. As she said, once a rebel, exactly. always a rebel. You know, have they forgotten their past that quickly? <laughs> in particular, well, yeah. in fairness to Mon Mothma, she is trying to sort of help here yeah. as well. You know, she she's kind of is saying to to Hera, we are going to need Ahsoka here um, because her testimony, you know, will help with your case here. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they have lost two pilots. There are the other pilots as well yeah. that have seen a massive ring shoot into hyperspace. Yeah. And indeed the captain of the of the fleet that is arriving that with those three ships also does see a ton of pergils hyperspacing as well. Um so it'll be interesting to see. But yes, the New Republic is very very unhappy. Yes, they are. And I suppose uh, for us as fans of Hera and fans of the Rebels show, um, we know Ghost and we know Ghost is Hera's ship. So her taking it out on a spin doesn't feel like a weird thing to do. But the fact that she uh, has been specifically told no, you do get the feeling that there's been this antagonistic relationship between her and the uh, the Republic Command for quite a while where she potentially has been following loads of leads trying to find her friend um, or trying to uh, stir up support for these missions and they've effectively said no to her so uh, her uh, running away with their ships and taking a taking a squadron obviously uh, may piss them off a little bit like get, I kind of get yeah. that I'm not saying they're right because I want to see the story of course yeah but um but I, I can see why they would be uh, pretty annoyed at her uh, at her taking them off I suppose one question I had which was like do you not just go Here's the data. Here's the ships, the the, the big massive ring we saw yeah. that went into hyperspace that we tracked from the start. Here's the data on the ship. Here's the the camera. Here's the sonar. Yeah. Here's the <laughs> the radar data points. Uh-huh. Like, would you not just go send that to command and go? Look, I proved you. Look, they're there. Just yeah. Let us give us five minutes. But- I know that doesn't make a good story. Yeah. I fully understand why they're doing it from a story point, which is inject a bit of conflict within the hero's journey from the good side. Yeah, exactly. In order to kind of bring them when they, when Thrawn does appear, Yeah, that injects, it. you were right all along. Exactly. Oh my God, we'll pull it all together. Yeah, but in fairness, Mom Mothma does address that. So that's exactly yeah. what she's saying to Hera. They didn't really know exactly where the, where she was going. Mon Mothma gets in contact with her. I presume they probably shut down communications for a while. Uh, Mon Mothma gets in contact and goes, hang on a second, right? If you've got Morgan Elspeth in custody, then fine. If you've got proof that uh, that Thrawn's around, then fine. Do you have any of that information? Do you have anybody? Do you have anything to show for you turning your back on our orders, which said, do not go that go and do this mission? Then you're fine. If not, you and Ahsoka need to get back here as soon as possible and explain yourself. And that's probably where they would use the 
stuff that you're talking about, Chris. But they yeah. they want her back there because she disobeyed the order. Exactly. Uh, but yeah. I mean, the weird thing about this is that you know they know that Elspeth is on the loose. Yeah. So it was you know a high ranking sort of governess. Um, from imperial times that was in captivity they've seen the result of that new mm-hmm. uh ship of the new republic fleet so it's not so much about whether elspeth is in captivity or not they in a sense it's just simply about their decision that they told her not to go yeah. it's almost procedural which is probably the case 90% of the time. Exactly. But nonetheless, it's that Hera does in a earlier episodes say about, you know, is briefing them. And so it's not like they don't know that something isn't amiss here. Well, she briefed, yeah. here, she briefed Ahsoka, not, not Which is weird. them, because she was, she was briefing Ahsoka because Ahsoka was the one that brought uh, Morgan yeah. Elspeth in. She didn't go to the council and say, right, um, Morgan Elizabeth has escaped. I'm taking the ghost and I'm going after her. She said, this leads to a bigger thing. We could be able to find my mate and we could be able to stop Grand Admiral Thrawn from coming back. And they went, hang on a second. You're just using that to get your way. No, you can't do that. So if she had gone to them and saying, my mission is to recapture Morgan Elizabeth, no, exactly. maybe they would have said yes. Exactly. You know? But yes. still, as well, there is evidence of imperial activity, such as the events that happened on Corellia. So they know all this stuff. It's not as such directly linked to Grand Admiral Thrawn. Absolutely. He yeah. is the whisper here, but actually they know that there is remnant Imperial activity happening yeah. throughout the galaxy because it's effectively happening on their strategic military uh, shipyards and, and where it's been built. And they know that Elspeth has escaped and... Yeah. The people that did it effectively destroyed that. So I get it. I get what she's saying. Absolutely. Yeah, but they specifically counted that. They said, but you rounded all of them up and they've been taken away. So they believe that the Imperials that were on, that were on Corellia have all been rounded up. So they, they're trying to avoid a war. And again, we stupid. mentioned it exactly. We mentioned it before. <laughs> this is the post war analogy exactly what happened in england exactly what happened in germany after the war and exactly what happened in france after world war ii they would do anything to avoid a real third world war many times after the second world war it could have happened again these people in power in the republic command are doing everything to go i'm just not going back to war we're going to deal with it politically because we're not we're not going to go back into another uh, conflict just over a rumor or just over an idea no totally agreed but a new entity that rises from the ashes yeah. of an old one, the future is not secured until, you know, it. T- it's not just the event of the rebellion. Yep. Like, you know, in the same way that even the Empire saw with Andor, there are remnants against it, the, C- the ISD, Secret Service. Yeah. It's not like they... The, the new republic structures don't have their spy agency or their military wing so it is also weird that they don't want to investigate it because there is this securing the new republic's future yeah. which is not to say all out war but even <laughs> that investigation underlying so the oversight committee has literally done a massive oversight here absolutely absolutely they believe that the explosion of death star 2 the fireworks going up over coruscant it was the end of their massive battle with the empire now everything's just going back to the old politics which is exactly what happens and exactly why it falls again yeah Yeah. and i think look we'll also like by the end of this or at least the film we'll also see one of the oversight committee isn't is a a bad guy is working or they'll just actually show them to be politicians exactly they don't necessarily have to be a double agent to make stupid decisions like a lot of politicians uh, may do in real life but what i I think it's also why mom motha says you know she does warn Hera to say the fleet is on the way and not to help you know so it at least with mom mothma i think you know she has a she has a 
more trust in the judgment of Hera than of some of the others, but she is having to play like she, uh, like we saw in Andor. She's still having to play that diplomatic Always. political game, yeah. uh, to secure her own position or keep that secure. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I think because mm-hmm. you're just going, assuming Grand Admiral Thrawn does, uh, hyperspace return. jump back and return um then i guess it's like egg on the face um and i guess you're wanting to have her to have some support here because yes. um she is doing the right thing and even the committee should see that even if procedurally she was wrong to do what she did yeah but as as we said before, new government, same old mistakes. Uh, you would always hope that people wouldn't allow someone like Hitler to rise again, but uh, it's happening. Oh, so, absolutely, uh, in in multiple countries this time, which is which is great in our world. So, uh, same thing reflected here in Star Wars. Uh, but but let's talk quickly about what Hera is actually doing, uh, trying to find Ahsoka and uh, and uh, Sabine, who've disappeared off the planet. I kind of like that where Hera lands, and it just it seems like. We're way too late here. Uh, everything's gone and no evidence of them, really, other than the broken map that, that uh, Balan Skull left behind. Um, and Hu Yang is there. Uh, and that's it. Mm. One one quick, that, that very interesting point, uh, as we kind of see this, is the broken map, way more broken than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I thought it was going to be some like, fixable, yeah. or something along those. Like, that along with... Ahsoka's hand exactly. would be the, the lead the way. Yeah. No, 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 no. They they that it's it's toast. Yeah. It, it's broken, broken. Yeah. Um, None of it plays in at all, and you even have Hu Yang with the line going, "This is irreparable. There's nothing I can do uh, to fix this." And he's you know a pretty pretty genius uh, at fixing things. I did like his comment. I did like hair finding him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way she did and, was good. Yeah. yeah, and it's just hidden behind the pillar. That that beautifully shot Mm -hmm, and it was just even then you don't usually see the droids have that much emotional kind of moments yeah yeah yeah. but just you could see him like or see the the way it was more it was played for us the viewers which is i told them yeah yeah. to stay together i I told and it was just like oh yeah like this is it he's holding sabine's helmet yeah yeah. Um, very, but, very, but that's very. One good. of the cool things always with the droids in in Star Wars is that they have got a personality themselves. You yeah. know, they they tend to have a personality that really figures them out. There's yeah. a great line with uh, with Hu Yang talking to Hera about uh, why people like her. Effectively, yeah, she does things her really own good. way. She makes her choices. That's why people like you. So, and I think even Hera is quite surprised to get a compliment from him because he tends to be quite, uh, quite direct with people. But uh, I guess that compliment comes over even better if it's coming from someone that's really direct with other people, right? So, yeah. uh, so I kind of like that from yeah. Woody Young. He's a, he's a great character. I'm really enjoying seeing as much of him as we've seen in this season. Definitely. And voiced by David Tennant as well. So, yeah, you know, that's always good. You got it. That just makes it so much better. Got to love it. I think the other side of that as well, I just actually really enjoyed the little moment as Cindy. Doula is allows Jason to come out of the ship after mm-hmm. she's done that initial sweep, and you have the the kind of team Jason and Chopper. Uh, but then she hears the noise of Huyang behind the the pillar, uh-huh. and you know tells him to get back. And I like how Chopper moves in front of him. Jason gets behind and sort of pops his head out to see. Uh, what what's happening and yeah. calling him Chop as well. Absolutely, uh, his little nickname. Yeah, as a not another nickname, I should say. Yeah, is the weird that's actually Chop's name. Everybody else calls him Chopper as his nickname. Yeah, because his designation is C one. You always P, yeah. nicknames should always be longer than your original name. <laughs> I love it, Chanters. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> and Christoph, of course. Okay. <laughs> But speaking of Jason, he does have a pretty massive moment in this episode. I have to say, I think they use Jason so well here. Yeah, we we kind of had uh, the mention of it a few episodes ago. If you didn't know his father's a Jedi, Jason kind of says, oh, I wish I could be a Jedi too. You know, a little nod to it. He's not. I don't think he's going to be a central character for the rest of the season. In fact, I think this may be the last we see of Hera, Chop, and, and Jason at this moment until maybe the wrap-up in the final episode. But he is used really well, his ability to connect to the Force um, when he's sitting over the ocean 
hoping that he'll get some kind of glimpse of Ahsoka Sabine and he hears the lightsaber battle uh, in the waves crashing below and then kind of shares that with uh, with Hera so that they can have some inkling of possibly where you could find um, Ahsoka. So I, I thought that was really interesting and a really, a really good use of him. Yeah, well, he certainly has skills on toast. Yes, he does. Uh, here, uh, that force sensitivity sort of passed through uh, Kanan Jarrus, his father uh-huh. from, from Rebels. Um, seemingly, though, as well, I, I, it was interesting that Hera could also hear um, the lightsabers as well. That I've... once she kind of focused in, yeah. I wasn't expecting that to begin with. Um, so I feel I like that was it's interesting. Something. Yeah, and, and it was it was addressed later on when Ahsoka comes back because she's told that it was Jason that heard the lightsaber battle and she's very surprised at that. And they kind of cut the conversation short there. She's really surprised because he shouldn't be able to hear the world between worlds. No matter how force sensitive he is, he shouldn't be able to hear that. So Ahsoka does react very weirdly to it. And I almost feel like what Jason was doing was saying, listen closely, mom, you'll hear the lightsabers. And he, then he's kind of passing on are amplifying it so yeah. she can hear it, something like that. But it's not explained exactly what he's done there. And I think it is a point that, that will be returned to some point in the future. Either. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I, I don't think it's a, a force power we've heard before or we've we've heard of before. And I think it's something that uh, Dave Filoni may, be, may return to in the future. But it was really cool. Yeah, I, I, I wonder about what they're going to do with this character. Because, again, potentially a powerful like force user exactly um okay, no training no whatever um so I, I am interested to see was he part of luke's um oh, luke's temple and mm-hmm. training and school in in the future um will they call that out will this character next show up in the new the new sequel with uh daisy ridley and all about ray's school yeah maybe. will they use this character again Will they kill this character off? Will this character get his own spin? I, I, I love knowing that every now and again you get these potential characters at a certain point yeah. in time when you introduce them to young and you know that they have a potential to kind of go in and become something in the future. Exactly. Because, again, we're, we know, what, another 15 years? Mm-hmm. Or so, we then get to the the first order, um, and so then it will, like so he he'll only be coming into his young twenties mm-hmm. um, if he has survived the 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 the, the sequels. Yeah. Um, so there's potential that th- this character could be a focus point. Absolutely, I, I like that because again, you got you got then this really cool. It's a not. I I'm not a Skywalker hater. But like you got a non Skywalker potential yeah. storyline, yeah, like, and, and lineage as well. Yes. You know, in the sense that it's it's Kanan Jarrus, but also you know because of his connection with Ezra. You know, if Ezra is coming back as well, that I'm assuming at some point, then um, it's it's also that kind of dynamic, yeah, yeah. But it's between two two force users, you know, almost yeah. like uh, Jason asking Ezra to tell him about his father and everything he did. You know, mm-hmm. yes, he's heard it from his mother, yeah. But, um, but you know, I I could see that just being a, a nice little nod. And I mean, in that sense, I do hope, and I guess it just depends how they structure the remaining episodes to what extent they're going to stay just with Ahsoka. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it is her show. Yeah. And, uh, but how long they're going to stay in, in the episode, uh, with Hera. I mean, they do have to introduce Grand Admiral Thrawn and of course Ezra Bridger. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so there's also a lot of work to be done by this, uh, series there. But I'm wondering, you know, will they cut back and forth here with stuff going, you know, as to what extent they may cut back and forth uh, between the two galaxies? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I really do hope that they um, haven't just front loaded um, this uh, this trinity of Hera, Chopper and Jason. Yeah. Uh, it, it but ju- I can see that they might do. It just feels like the most 
the most central stuff for the show are now taking place in another galaxy. Exactly. And yeah. You've yeah, you you got half the half the characters going off in, in that direction, and I think with Hera's um, "May the Force be with you" as she says goodbye, that just felt like a great final line for yeah, her in yeah. this show. But as Chris mentioned earlier on, we are building up to a Mandalorian set movie uh, coming up, which will uh, connect all of these shows that Filoni has been producing uh, in live action. So uh, I say there's very little chance we won't see these characters again. But I do like the last time we see Jason here, because there's a great joke in there driven by Ahsoka and uh, and Huyang, where Ahsoka sends uh, Jason off to explore a Jedi ship telling him, oh, there's a training center inside. And Jason goes, um, do you train Jedi? Will you train me? And he Yang says, no. <laughs> he goes, do you, can, you, can you create uh, lightsabers? He goes, yeah. Will you allow me to create one? No. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so while Jason good. has showed off his power of the Force, he's not getting training on either thing uh, from he Yang anyway. No, exactly. Uh, that, that was pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah, the same. I do have one potentially inter- in- interesting part, which is, if Sabine is no longer a pad one, Ahsoka is does have a space. Oh, okay. 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 So if Sabine's actions mean Ahsoka no longer is willing to train her as yeah. a pad one, then potentially yeah. Jace in the future. Because she did seem to be, take a little bit, you know She, she was, was she was impressed. She was impressed. She's impressed by Absolutely. his hearing and ability to yeah. zero in to her interests for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it's so, really unusual. He's heard the world between worlds from yeah. the other plane. Like that's yeah. something you don't generally hear, I suppose. And we're kind of bleeding into, I suppose, the central theme of this episode, really, which is yes. all about that legacy of the Skywalker and and where their Jedi training came from and it all bleeding into Ahsoka. So um, I, I think one of the other pieces of this before we pop into the major fun point of the episode, I suppose, one of the other pieces of this is Jason is not from that lineage. Yeah, so no, whoever exactly. takes him on as a, as a master will be training him in a completely different way than what we've seen in the path of Qui-Gon Jinn to Obi-Wan to Anakin to uh, to Ahsoka. That, that path is no longer the path that um, that Jason would follow. No, absolutely. Follow. And weirdly... Or may follow. Yeah, absolutely. And weirdly, I always thought Kane and Jarrus and Ezra's yeah, exactly. relationship was very different. It felt yeah. more like Anakin and Snips. A bit. A bit. You know, it, A it, bit. I, I, I think it was even to... different to that. No, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But, you know, it was also one built on a friendship uh, and mutual respect. Exactly. With Obi-Wan, you definitely felt the distance of teacher, Jedi Master, and apprentice. Exactly, exactly. Well, with our tiny point uh, taking almost 40 minutes, uh, we're going to move on to our saber point number two. So was he a force ghost or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk That's about it. The, yes, let's talk about this. We are going to the world between worlds for our second point because after that is the majority of, of this episode and the bit I think we were all waiting to see and uh, and waiting to to find out what happened. Um, is he a force ghost or not? No, he's coming from the time before. He's seen what's happening with Ahsoka through through the force, effectively. Um, it seems to be, and it's it, because he moves around in personality and in, in place. We'll talk about all of this, I'm sure, as we go. Because Anakin Skywalker moves through his timeline, it makes it more difficult to pinpoint where he's seeing her through the Force. But it seems to be around the time that he is becoming Darth Vader. It seems to be around the time that he's accepting that mantle of Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It- Definitely, this is something where I don't even know whether my kind of views on it are fully set as to actually mm. what happened. Mm. Um, but okay. I, I, no, I, I mean, I like, I think whilst they're in the world between worlds on the bridge, I feel that is actually the Anakin that pulled her through and mm. wants to continue the training. And then, like, to what extent it is the projection of Ahsoka on her master because you know it's I'm here to finish your training um and the lesson when she asks what what that is is 
It's whether you live or die. It's whether you actually come from this world between worlds into back into uh, reality. And I feel that as soon as he cuts the bridge and it goes down into the world of Candy Floss Land um, and the Clone Wars with okay. all the, the pink clouds. Yes. I, I did until you got the first sort of laser. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, what pink sort of candy yeah. floss type world it, it felt more willy wonka than <laughs> than clone wars yeah and but be, because you have ahsoka there as snips a younger snips uh-huh. that's when i start to think well to what extent then is she projecting it even with the you know the flourishes of um dave filoni's direction with you know Anakin turning to Vader, turning back to Anakin as the explosions go off uh, during that battle in the Clone Wars. Yeah. That that's her projection of knowing what he becomes. Yeah. I think we're going to start getting into a, a, a multiverse type discussion like we had when we were talking about Marvel. If we try to really break apart yeah. these scenes because the whole point of the world between worlds is that, that it sits outside of time and space and there's not enough rules here given from Dave Filoni and he messes with one or two of them as well which I'll talk about in a minute um, so it's not enough to say she was pulled through a door into the world between world and then kicked out through a door at the end because it happens a different way in Rebels than it happens here oh, absolutely. as she gets in here the introduction to it really is Anakin going you're now here and now at the end of it, she's back out again. Yep. So those moments are are um, different to how the world between worlds was used in the past as well. Uh, the fact that they're traveling through different time points and she's changing age through those time points again. That's not what happened last time we saw it for that Absolutely. one episode of yep. of, uh, of Rebels. So it's kind of difficult to put your finger on if you're Definitely. asking if you're asking those questions. I think they're probably the questions that you're not expected to ask. Yeah. It's more about the story between these two characters and what's happening. Um, Speaking of the moment, one of the moments that's changed, the last time Ahsoka was here, she was fighting Darth Vader. That's how she died. She had her battle with Vader. And in that battle with Vader, um, he tempts her to fight him. And she says, no, I'm not going to fight you. And we have in this version, Anakin says that great line back to you. Absolutely. There's absolutely one of my favorite lines here when she says, I won't fight you. And Mm -hmm. he goes, I've heard that before. Um, Basically back in the Sith temple um, from from Rebels. So I really, I really like that. And I have to say, I wasn't expecting the training aspect as well here. You know, I'm here to finish your training Mm -hmm. to... Uh, because it kind of felt like CPD from beyond the grave, um, you know, with the continued professional development of Ahsoka. <laughs> I was just like, you know, and well, he says, you're never too old to learn. So really? absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it, it was, I found it really amusing. Um, but I, I like that, you know, because she is effectively being uh, tossed off uh, a cliff there by Bale and Skull, um, that she, has arrived here effectively yeah. uh, f- from death, and yeah. here is this choice to to live or die exactly. um, from from Anakin. Absolutely. So, I, I yes to all this. <laughs> my my personal view is this is limbo. There's a new world between worlds. It's not the, the yes. Yeah. You can potentially get to different time points of time and space. I feel this is her purgatory. Like she is dead. Mm-hmm. She's come through slightly. She is seeing in what I, the way I envisioned it is a force ghost of Anakin. Cause so it caused the line. Mm-hmm. I've heard that before. Yeah. Indicating to me when he was Vader, he heard that line. Now that is what like he came and did this for her and she had to make the decision and let go of the, the, the issues that she faced and the, mm-hmm. that she, we get to with her at the training part. So they didn't, she didn't actually go back to the Clone Wars. She's reliving that moment yeah. in this world between worlds, yeah, limbo, absolutely. purgatory aspect. Yeah. And that's why she is, when she goes back, she snips. She's still Ahsoka in mind, but she snips in that, in look and feel and body. Right. Because that's how her, 
that's how the limbo purgatory is working. She's imagining, not imagining this, but like she's re- reliving it, but not actually living it and being pulled out of time and space yeah. and being put back in. Yeah. That's the way I'm just saying it. Like, mm-hmm. This is essentially her decision to live or die. Yeah. It's like, will she let go of the past and live and go forth and fight? Absolutely. And she, in order to do that, she has to let go of her guilt of what, which we see this, and then she falls through and we get this beautiful. And what I, and again, I'm not as deep, deep on Ahsoka as you guys from your Clone Wars bits and the Rebels bit. Yeah. But you get this expansion of this character really going into and again this this more a slightly more adult version now i know we talked about clone wars and rebels being uh, maturing as the, the 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 show age with the audience absolutely but this very much getting into survivor guilt yeah and uh guilt of being trained and attached not just but being trained and attached to this powerful master who exactly. she loved and cared about, but ultimately did a lot of evil. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. in some respects, his, you know, he does say at the, um, the, the siege of Mandalore, and he, he, he says to her, Oh, is this what it's all about? You know, when she, she, she kind of says that, she, you know, she, she doesn't want this teaching because she doesn't want to simply be, um, a Jedi war leader or, uh, someone a weapon. almost seen as a, yeah, a weapon or well, yeah. agent of death effectively where it's all about death. I mean, we yeah. have Anakin saying, you know, previously they were keepers of the peace. Exactly. Times change. You need to adapt. And he's effectively saying you're more than that because I'm more than that. And yeah. I taught you. But you have to let go of the fact that you see me as Vader. You know, there is yeah. that element. So, well, well, yeah. that <laughs> what I meant was, is that they're both actually coming from the same place, but his, it's not, in some ways it is a redemption of Anakin to say that Vader was a part of him, but he's more than that because mm. of his time when he was Anakin. Yeah. And he's trying to put that across he- to Ahsoka to say, you're not just the young Jedi who was trained during war yes. and had the war leadership. You're more than that, and you can be more than that. Yeah. And what gives Ahsoka pause is because his more than being a war Jedi is he is Vader. Exactly. That's her problem. That's her challenge. That's where she's realizing, I can't take instruction from you. I want to live, and I want to be go back to the old Jedi ways. I want to go back to learning how to be a Jedi and not just use my weapons and use my uh, my Jedi abilities to kill people. Um, look how many people died in the Clone Wars. Clones or not, they were a lot of them were very close friends with her, and she sacrificed yeah. them. Um, oh my yeah, god, that incredible. scene where she takes a clone trooper's hand and she obviously feels him die and being that connected to the force. Yeah. But you see a child hold this dead, dying clone's hand. Exactly. And exactly. I was just like, oh. Well, and it, it, yeah, well, exactly. And it, like she's worried about becoming a new Vader if she accepts these teachings or, you know, when the talk of the legacy. She's is, worried that the way that she was born and trained means yeah. that the only thing she can be is a war Jedi. I have lots of flashbacks here to uh, the introduction of the war doctor in Doctor Who, where we thought we knew all of the doctors that had existed. Yeah. And there was one doctor that was created, played by John Hurt, that was created for war. And then he disappeared and they all wiped him from their memory because he was a different type of doctor than all the rest of them were. I thought that that kind of had a little connection yeah, to the absolutely. two. Absolutely. You know, to, I know you mentioned, um, limbo or purgatory, Chris. The, the only Star Wars kind of reference or something that within the, the, the live action Star Wars universe before that I feel is similar to the world between worlds is the Jedi cave, the force caves that exactly. people like Luke yeah. have entered and Ray entered in, in the sequel trilogy. Um, those were always really mystical places where they faced a challenge, usually including some version of themselves 
staring back at them, where they have to make a decision how they proceed in their Jedi training. Here we have Ahsoka seeing younger versions of herself. The first one that we see in the Clone Wars is actually season one, episode 19. It's in the first season yeah. of uh, of the Clone Wars, the Battle of Ryloth. Is, it's around that time. It's not exactly the same. And as I said, Dave Filoni has made some changes here. In that episode, it's, she gets her first command, gets to lead a squadron of fighters uh, up against uh, the enemy and loses all of them because she won't listen to orders. She thinks she's better than she is or thinks she can go about uh, disregarding orders like her master or Anakin did and then loses all of them. Yeah. Uh, whereas this feels a lot more personal. This is on the battlefield and seeing the death of, of clone troopers around her. And then the second one comes from the final season, comes from comes from season seven. It's the Siege of Mandalore, a great arc in the show, but it's a scene that takes place outside of the episode she's actually uh, already gone and had the Siege of Mandalore, I think. Um, it's not the same as what happens in the episode in, in season seven, but it is another big moment for her. It is, it is another, um, moment where she has to, uh, lead her troops into battle. And he's kind of seeing that progression with the one end of the Clone Wars to the other end of the Pl- Clone Wars. It is within weeks of him turning to, uh, into Vader effectively. So, um, so it is, it is quite interesting bookend to the story of Ahsoka seeing this kind of early, early time when she's just getting used to, uh, to effectively having the command thrust upon her. And then at the end where she's leading her troops into battle. And we do see live action Captain Rex in that this is, episode that as well. That is true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It goes, yeah. Tamora Morrison back uh, in the role this time, not Dee Bradley Baker. Yeah. And the other thing is if young Ahsoka who, was phenomenal. I think the actor here is phenomenal. Yes, if you uh, recognize her, uh-huh. then you'll recognize the actor Ariana Greenblatt, who mm-hmm. played the young Gamora from Marvel. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, she, I thought she was really good here. Yeah. Um, that, like, that conveyance of this, um, uncertainty with what Anakin is doing, you know, and, and also in the, the brief little battles that she has yeah. with him, you know, that, that moment on Mandalore where, you know, they are talking about this inheriting of knowledge, uh, and being part of a legacy. And she says, if I'm everything you are, what do I become? Yes. Um, you know, this idea that worried of becoming a Vader, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, he says, you've learned nothing. We need to start again, like in the opening clip yeah. and, you know, then you die if you have, if you've learned nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he attacks with the red lightsaber then. And she's just really good. Like yeah. I, I thought Ariana was really good here with such a, a young, iconic snips. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And having, having to come in and just do that role for, for one episode, <laughs> you know, obviously learn the fight sequences and all that kind of stuff. She's, uh, she's really good. Big talent. I think, uh, people have told me that she's also in Barbie playing, uh, playing young Barbie. So, uh, she's doing lots of iconic <laughs> characters in the last couple of years, uh, the young versions of them. Yes. She was very good in Barbie. Really? Okay. Still one of the best films of the year so far. Really? We yeah. we, we decided to go to Oppenheimer instead. Um, but you didn't do a Barbieheimer? Definitely not. No, yeah. we didn't. Unfortunately, we actually got some bad feedback on Barbie. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I enjoyed it. Well, it's coming out on digital soon enough, so you can rent it. Definitely. Give it an old world. If you don't but, like it, at least you only paid a, a few dollars for exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And I'm sure it'll be worth more than uh, Indiana Jones and the... Dial of yes, Destiny, which yes, was, I which was so. not worth the twenty quid we paid to. to, uh, no. to well, I did shame. quite like it. it anyway, was, let's talk yeah. about good things then. Um, good things, Lucas. Once again, Anakin Skywalker, played by Hayden Christensen here. Love that they get to use all versions of yeah, Anakin Skywalker. Cool. You know, he has the haircut he had during the Clone Wars cartoons, <laughs> which worked really well. I'm amazed they were able to do it. I know it was based on uh, Clone Wars, uh, the movie as well, but it looked really good. It looked, I thought it was, I thought they did it really well, but we see him going through all of the versions. We see him as Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker with the, with the yellow eyes, um, and that, that look on his face, you know, but yeah. we also see the cheeky grin, um, that, that Anakin Skywalker did throughout, uh, throughout, throughout his time, um, training with, with Ahsoka. You know, he always had that, had that fun, uh, element of diving into a battle and being a, being a great general during the war. And here we see a bit of that in, in some of the scenes, uh, in, in the early Clone Wars and the it, Battle of Ryloth. It yeah. was really good. Um, I have to say, and I think as well, each of those moments where you get that glimpse of Vader, 
um, like with the bombs exploding at the first one, but mm-hmm. even as uh, Anakin comes back uh, to the w- world between worlds and you almost get that static image mm-hmm. of, of Vader, I thought that was just really like superbly Very done. Good. Very good. Um, and there's more. There's 100% more. There's like thinking you'll miss it kind of lightning flash, yeah. not in the smoke, but a later one yeah. as well. Uh, like he's just silhouetted behind him as mm-hmm. well. Cool. While he's it's still his kind of, when he is Anakin, there's this silhouette that it looks, I had to pause it and I had to see. It just looks like the outline, just enough that you're like, hey, it could be a shadow. Right. Until you think it's the shadow of Vader. And then you're like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a nod to that kind of that 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 look that feel that iconic display of Vader right um right. but for me just the 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 journey of again Hayden Christian oh like reminds me just why I did love him as Anakin mm-hmm. like yeah. he got a lot of hate yeah of course a lot of hate for but, years but yeah. like that's just the internet the people exactly anyway, he was great yeah. and this as you said like. I didn't watch much of Clone Wars. Uh, I've kind of actively always said that. The bits I have seen, now here seeing Hayden Christensen reprise his role as Anakin and Vader for Kenobi and jumping back and forth, embodying who that was again and really just kind of leaning in and going, yeah, no, this is my character. I, like, helped shape this over two iconic films um, and really then... The story has hit, the character's been moved forward. Yeah. But you know what? So can I. And he's really just, like you said, that smirk. Yeah. And it's, not, it, it's a smile. It's a smirk. It it's is. a cheeky chap. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I love it. it. Uh, and it's interesting oh, it. when he was doing the interviews for Obi Wan for his appearance yeah. in that he mentioned a few times about going back and watching the Clone Wars and seeing what had been done with the character and saying, "Wow, they've really did develop the character quite a lot since I saw it." But I certainly didn't take on board that he was probably doing his research for these moments in Ahsoka. So yeah, well, uh, well that's yeah. it. And also the the other great thing that Anakin said with um, for Kenobi, mm-hmm. but also you know I'm sure it's the same here because there were seven seasons of Clone Wars where you know the voice actor Matt Lanter. Mm-hmm. It was doing the voice and expanding on this character. Exactly. And the, his relationships as Anakin that Hayden Christensen had never done. Exactly. And just having to watch those. So, I mean, like, fur juice to him. Because, mm-hmm. like, those moments where it felt like the Clone Wars, it felt really, really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All in short scenes. And I, I know these two actors have worked together before, Rosario Dawson and, and Hayden Christensen. I think they were in Jumper together. I just can't remember what movie it was that they were in together. Uh, but the two of them have worked together before. And you could tell, you could all, you could already sense their relationship in these scenes. They're both great actors. So, you know, that's, that's, um, that's par for the course. But I think they worked so well together seeing the two of them, uh, on screen. But overall, these scenes do lead, do lead to Ahsoka, uh, choosing life, choosing that she will be able to live her life out in a different way than her master yes. taught her. Um, I, I think that's a, a really good revelation for the character. And directly afterwards, when she returns back and is is rescued and brought back, we see a completely different, I think, uh, Ahsoka. She's dressed in white. She's smiling much more. She's ready exactly. to joke with yeah. people. Um, she's really interested, as you say, in, in Jason and his force abilities. She's She's she feels different yeah. until he starts asking a few sort of um, pertinent questions when you know he gets sent to the starship with Huyang when mm-hmm. he gets a little bit too inquisitive exactly. about yeah. possibly becoming a Jedi and here is like you go back to the ship now as then he, Huyang delivers his no yes no exactly uh, to all his <laughs> questions yeah. yeah yeah really good I I I, I loved the very subtle. Costume change for Ahsoka. Just the the the, yeah, like the most cool. slightly brighter white. Yeah, and it's just like very subtle, but just that along with her cloak changing as she walks out, and she had the more Buddhist monk at peace. Yeah, yeah. she has found serenity, kind of 
piece. Question I did have, the bleed from the world between worlds back to the ocean. Uh Uh-huh. What did you think? It it looked beautiful, but I was a bit like, okay, okay. (laughs) <laughs> I just because I, I that's why I, I I really don't think it was the world between worlds because like okay. we've seen portals we've seen it as portals and I like here it's just kind of went to be so I know I look I know yeah, it just looks I, I, visually cool yes yeah I think it's an evolution think, of yes. of what happens I mean at the end of the day I guess the concept initially you know possibly as as you say the evolution of the force caves that yeah. you go into. And so it was done with that kind of opening that looks like a door. And here it's just that you can actually come into this in any way, depending on the situation that means you will get there. Yeah, but but in fairness, also look at stills of Ahsoka on that bridge in the world between worlds. It's the world between worlds. She just may have accessed it differently. It's it's definitely that. I did love the exit because it did feel like... It does make you question, is Ahsoka, has she just landed in the sea and she's been using her innate Jedi powers to keep herself alive during this time and has to make yeah. that decision of do you live or do you die? You know, we've seen this in other, in other movies before, in other completely different properties where there's some, a play going on in somebody's head and they have to make that choice to live or die. And that it turns out in real life, they were drowning or dying. You know, that's, yes. that's potentially where it's also referencing. But I think in the world of Star Wars, uh, particularly with Dave Filoni's uh, work before, I think we, uh, we know that this is how he likes to deal with the spirituality, with the, with that sense of something more than, more than yourself. Yeah. And Mesochlorians. So he never yeah. gets to the N word. No, no, never even talks about it. And he had nine seasons and avoided it. Yes. Take that, exactly. George Lucas. <laughs> I think that's it for the main point of the episode, but let's close it out with our saber point number three. Off to a galaxy far, far away. Jonah and the whale cell? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Hurgle hyperspace travel. Absolutely. Looks amazing. Loved it. My ass can glow that blue and like just like shoot me down the road. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> it dep- I'd have <laughs> different medical issues, but yeah. it'd be still cool. Depends how many raspberry flavoured ice pops you have. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, this looked cool. Mm-hmm. Again, this is where I said I had questions about previous history. Yeah. I know you said Ezra had a, an affinity to animals. Did Ahsoka have an affinity, or is she just kind of innate force user? I can kind of communicate with the sense of massive things. I think she gives it a go, because okay. ultimately, when she's in the cockpit with Huyang, I mean, yeah, the, I think there's that innate force ability um, anyway. Uh, but, you know, she says, I don't know whether we're actually going to the yeah. place. It's not like she was that specific. So whatever okay. the force connection she was doing, it, I guess it was one of... We need your help yeah. to jump to a place, you know, whatever. And, but she hasn't been able to understand back what, mm. um, the Pergil is doing. And, and I think that's why you get that moment in the cockpit where she says, I don't that's actually know where we're going. We're going, you know, we're going into the unknown. Exactly. Whereas the thing what you got from rebels to some extent was Ezra was able to understand them there were not not immediately and not in any profound oh, well, deep yeah. way yeah i don't think but i mean i say that in the episodes with the burgles you know he was able to understand what they were doing and that connection and as yeah. i say there was he would connect with the wolves and the Lothcats as well. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think as we described it before, Chris, I think that description still holds that that's his force ability that he's put yes. all of his spend into. Um, yeah. But, no, but exactly. Ahsoka hasn't put all of her spend into that force ability. She's so, got like a so, one or two points that she can kind of, she can send the message. Yeah. But I was just more, so she didn't have, there wasn't this episode where she sat down with Ezra and was like, here's yeah. how I do it. And he was like, oh my God, you're 10 times more powerful. But like, there wasn't any of that kind of, okay. No, fine. no, not at all. Ahsoka only appeared in a few episodes of, of Rebels. Um, not, she wasn't a central character. She wasn't a major member of the Rebels team. They all knew her, of course, and they, they had uh, missions with her uh, back and forth, but she was, uh, she was off doing uh, other 
battles in the galaxy. Yeah. Right now. Oh, I, rebel I, I, stuff. Yeah. I love that Yang is as nervous as hell at the plan that they're going to do Absolutely. as well. He's been um, for 25,000 years. <laughs> yeah. He's obviously quite cautious. You know? But uh, I, I, I just thought this was absolutely fantastic. I thought it was really epic. Yeah. Um, I love uh, the thing I noticed as well when Ahsoka gets that idea when she looks up and sees the Purgle um, sort of moving through the clouds, just mm-hmm. the, the couple of them, you get the that the theme that is at the end credits, uh, that really kind of epic theme uh, plays just briefly as yeah. she looks up and sees the Purgle. And so actually I'm, in my mind, I, and because it's quite slow tempo, I think it, it fits with the Purgle. Yeah. And in those end credits, it's as the Purgle are on screen when it starts up. Mm. So actually that fantastic piece of music is, to my mind, the Purgle theme. It feels like it. It yeah. feels like it. Yeah. Um, and I just loved it. I loved the fact that the three ships from the New Republic fleet were having to kind of take evasive maneuvers Everyone kind of mouth open because it was a bit like me um, going, wow, this is cool. Absolutely. Because all the way as it builds up, I was like, oh, and how are they going to do the hyperspace jump? <laughs> That's I, That you was know? cool to see. That was honestly, I was just like, it's really cool looking. It felt really epic. It felt yeah. very cinematic as well. Yes, so no exactly. wonder they, they put it on in theaters as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just closing on that end as well. Yeah. Just the boo. Now I do feel bad for her and Jace. Me too. Like, Me too. That's your. That's your. Like you're like. Oh my god. May the force be with you. You're going on this amazing adventure, and you're like, no, but mom, I'm fine. I'm 18, or like, I'm eight. Yeah, I'm old enough. <laughs> Let me get inside the mouth of a whale. But yeah. did you love the joke though? Hera goes, "We can't go because uh, Jason's too young to travel <laughs> to another galaxy. Yeah. It's all your fault, kid." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I yeah. love that. Um, yeah. I'd 100% go out and party all night, but I got a kid, you exactly. know. Oh, no. <laughs> Kids awake partying and yeah, you're asleep yeah, on the couch. Cool. Yeah, it's yep. fine. Yep. That was really cool, I thought. Um, I liked as well Captain Teva trying to sort of sort of hold up the fleet so mm-hmm. that they don't disturb <laughs> the, the connection that Ahsoka's having to do. And then in the end, it's like, you know, he's basically being ordered to tell it. Tell tell the captain and he's like, well, you're not going to believe me. Yeah, <laughs> um, just <laughs> get the out the space way. Yeah. yeah, just get out the way. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I I really like that yeah. uh, bit from Teva as well. Uh, but stuff. I really love this moment. I just thought it was really like wonderful. Yeah. Um, I wish I could have seen it in the cinema. That could be cool. Yeah, there was one missed that opportunity though. That like that jump to hyperspace uh-huh. for me was the perfect close where it goes to the Star Wars theme. Like, that's just, they, they for Disney Plus, it just didn't jump into duh, 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 like the end of a Star Wars movie. They should right. have just for once because you're just like, pew! And then you jump to the, the end credit theme. Yeah. They just didn't do that. And I was like, oh, that was the you had the perfect like <laughs> composing. Like I know that's not what they do with, a, like, no, with any don't. of the shows. Yeah, no. They just should have. Yeah, they do. They do use the Star Wars theme occasionally. Actually, I was I was noticing it last night when I was watching a couple of episodes of uh, of Clone Wars. They actually do have a bit more of the Star Wars theme than I remember. But I I absolutely love Ahsoka's theme for this show, and I really like when it. I, I sit there and watch the credits every time because it's uh yeah. it's really really good. Um, good stuff. That's our final saber point for the episode. I've got a couple of notes. You guys got any notes at all to talk about? Go ahead, then, Derek. Give us your notes couple of big things really that we haven't talked about that are all over the internet since uh, since this episode came out the um the is it a blue dress or a or a gold dress uh, version for this episode of Ahsoka is do Ahsoka's eyes go gold uh, when yes. she puts the red saber in front of her face when she's facing off with Anakin I swear I watched this five, four or five times and it just looks like the reflection of the red saber in her really bright blue eyes but i've seen stills of it and loads of people are saying that is her turning her having the potential to turn to the dark side where she could have struck down anakin right there 
in The World Between Worlds, is there a moment of hesitation where she could have struck him down before throwing it away and saying, I choose to live? What do you guys think about the theory? It's possible, for sure. Yeah. It's definitely possible. And actually, that would be an interesting touch because as the great master Yoda did say, you know, there is that possibility of light and dark within mm -hmm. us all. Um, I think depending he said on how possibility you... there is of dark un un light. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why way, you went German yeah. halfway through that. Um, so, you know, it is absolutely possible, but I think initially, and certainly when we rewatched it a few times, I did think it was just the, lightsaber mm -hmm. reflection but equally it makes the point still that you know as she's holding up vader's lightsaber yeah um there is a moment there and it it's that reflection in her eyes mm -hmm. uh sort of is reflective dare i say it of that moment <laughs> yeah yeah that's her choosing to uh to not do it i suppose yeah any, any thoughts on that chris i i, I like I, I like that there's a conversation I, I I can see why I can see the, the 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 potential. I don't. I think it's literally just like you said. It looks to me. It looked like a reflection because yes, every Jedi has an opportunity to turn to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Um, very few can go to that level of the dark side that their eyes go gold and yellow. Um, like there's very few that can even go there. Like even if you look at any of the the Inquisitors mm -hmm. who. Yes, are bad, are Sith, or dark side Jedi's. Mm -hmm. Um, no, like there's one, two, maybe that have a like a golden eye. Would well, yeah, be one that I can think yeah. of. Yeah, like they're not all of them. So I think it's just it's it, it's a nice it's potential. Like you said, it's a nice nod, nice yeah. kind of potential, but more it was just a reflection yeah in my opinion I'll, I'll be intrigued in the making of if they if they mention it that it was a nod like in the in the in the caves i suppose that the force caves were uh where it's an evil version of of ahsoka for a quick moment before she makes yeah. her final choice or something like that uh one other thing that i just didn't get to call out earlier on when we had our discussion about uh about hero getting away from the public command did you hear who was actually covering for her and why the uh why she was able to have as much time we had a little call out to senator Organa, yes, uh, Leia mm. Organa, helping out Hera here. So uh, a nice little nod uh, that she's still working on the side of the rebels, yeah. even though she has to be for, has to be part of uh, of the Senate. Yeah, yeah. De definitely. And I still think we may see a Carrie Fisher at some point in the future. Mm. Now, like they've done, they've done it before. I know. We know they have. There was mixed feelings. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of mixed feelings. I feel at a certain point they will. Mm. I don't know when, but I think. They, they'll name drop her up until they need her for a story bit. They'll get uh, her daughter to come in and do a body double and then just kind of do the, the, the CGI on top. Maybe. I think, like, yeah. they're getting a lot better at young de-aging and young kind of overlays. I think they'll do it. I just will see when. But anyway, yes, lovely nod. Very cool note. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I'm not too sure they will do it, but that's just me. I think mm. I, I I think in the same way as we you know saw Soka sort of the, the weight lifted from uh, her time in the world between worlds. I feel like you know, yes, Skywalker law is going to flow through Star Wars Galaxy, even if they're never in there. So I think why just complicated um i mean even if it's just voice i think it would yeah. be better for me just two things um just the you know as ahsoka feels the impression of sabine and balon around the henge I do kind of like the look on ahsoka's eyes because i it, it almost felt slightly neutral but not um you know in terms of how disappointed she is with sabine mm. for not mm. destroying the star map at at that moment when she asked it before she was knocked off the cliff. So, uh, but I just thought it was a real kind of good touch. Mm -hmm. um, and weirdly, I kind of, because I like things all chopper, uh, I like the chopper com chatter uh, as uh, Jason sort of relays the, the coordinates to um, 
Hera and Huyang mm-hmm. to to go uh, and check out from another sweep that Chopper has done from his little dish, um, yeah. presumably Ahsoka. So um, I just thought there was kind of like personality behind it, sort yeah, of yeah, both yeah. Jason and Chopper talking, and you hear sort of listening into that. It yeah. it was almost a bit it it almost a r- bit reminded me of. Skywalker and Solo being caught in the garbage compressor and C-3PO and R2-D2. Oh, okay. yeah. Just just that, that con chatter coming through, but it just felt kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Chopper for me is the, the, the very foul-mouthed sailor, <laughs> but you just don't understand him. So he's yeah. like swearing and saying really like dark, rude shit, but we just don't understand it. So that's why Jace loves it. He's just like, yeah, oh, you're so funny. It was like, yeah, Chopper, exactly. come on, like, oh, whoa. Exactly. Honestly, great videos. Uh, go check them out on YouTube yeah. uh, of Chopper's voice replaced with uh, with swearing all the time. And I think I do it almost every time he talks. I just replace it with, what the F do you know? Or yeah, exactly. <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's exactly what it sounds like. So uh, good stuff. Uh, that's it for our notes and thoughts, I guess, overall on the episode. Um, final thoughts on the episode, Chris? Yeah, for me, just I'm going to be very quick. Loved it. Like yeah. I said, the the visually spectacular, mm. narratively spectacular part. Like it grew a character who I've barely known much of, and um, to the point where I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah, you're you're expanding on a character that like I'm really interested in now. Um, so overall, absolutely fantastic. If this is what Filoni is going to do in his film, mm-hmm. which is a two and hour, two and a half hour kind of collection of all of the 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 mandalorian and the soka universe with gens thrawn i'm in i'm down this is going to be some of the most visually impactful star wars narratively impactful star wars we've had in decades and like you talked about oh like i was 10 i was 18 i was 22 i was five again just everyone everyone felt like it was some of the new star wars that they had as a kid fantastic there you go Excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, John, how about yourself? What's your final thoughts of the episode? Yeah, absolutely loved this episode. Give it five. Sweeping Pergil out of five. Um, I just thought it was magical, mm-hmm. uh, which is the spirit of Star Wars yep. in that sense. Um, I love the jump uh, to hyperspace in the Pergil. Uh, I thought that was awesome. Loved the music. That music is really mm-hmm. fab for me. Um, everything in the world between worlds was really meaningful. And I think just that, you know, um, line for Ahsoka, uh, to be able to just cross and make her choice and have that weight of what happened to Anakin sort of lifted from mm-hmm. her. Superb. Massive. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll be sad if Hera, Jason and Chopper maybe aren't around until the last episode of the season. But, um, yeah, it is. We'll see what comes ultimately. Um, but I just really enjoyed this from uh, start to end. And, of course, now that we have most of the cast uh, in a different galaxy, uh, I am so looking forward to episode six. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, five Sweeping Pergil out of five. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, I love this as well. I love that we were able to take a peek into Ahsoka's history and uh, I suppose finalize her story with Anakin. You know, it was one of the interesting ones when we, if you remember, John, when we went to see the cinema, when we saw uh, Ahsoka, this little uh, sidekick for Anakin Skywalker, we came out afterwards going... Well, she doesn't appear in any of the the uh, original trilogy movies, so she must be dead. I wonder how she dies, and that kind of that's kind of the story that sustained why people had an interest in her until she became an interesting character in and of herself. Yeah. And now, at the end of this tale of Anakin and Ahsoka's relationship, you now have her choosing to not be defined by Anakin Skywalker, to not be defined by the fact that her master became Darth Vader. It was nothing to do with her, and she can now move on with her own. I guess Jedi, uh, Jedi life and Jedi experience. That yeah. was a great story, and the best person to tell that is Dave Filoni. He knows uh, what beats to hit in such a shortened time frame. This five, uh, fifty-two minutes instead of 
seven seasons of Clone Wars story for, uh, for Ahsoka. So uh, great job. Excellent stuff. I think it's time to get a drink, John. Yes. Fellow Rebels, fellow quizzes, uh, welcome back to the Star Wars Ahsoka Cantina Quiz. It is episode five, or should I say part five? Uh, and so on to the question for the episode. What are the coordinates that Chopper gives Jason to locate Ahsoka? Ooh, interesting. I shall give that one more time. What are the coordinates that Chopper gives Jason to locate Ahsoka? Excellent. That's the fifth question in our Ahsoka Cantina quiz. Put it together with the others. And at the end of the season, send in the, all eight correct answers to us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. And you could be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Star Wars Ahsoka goodies. Good stuff and good luck, fellow rebels. Excellent. I think Chopper is going to bring us our feedback again. Let's move into our feedback section. First up, we have an email in from Russell Hooper after episode four, where he said the following. Hi, fellow rebels. Listening to the podcast today, and I had some thoughts. Here's the main one. Sabine is obviously on her way to Peridia. Here's how I think Ahsoka reconnects her. Assuming the Chimera still has the section of the Lothal Temple that Palpatine used to tempt Ezra when Ahsoka leaves the world between worlds, she exits into Chimera. Mm, interesting. Where does that leave Hera and the Ghost Crew? Preparing for when Thrawn and his forces return. Then facing the Chimera when they do. I really want to see the look on the Senate's collective faces when Hera says, I told you so, (laughs) except I still think that one senator who never fought is one of Thrawn's men. Mm. I still like the idea of Zeb flying in to help the stricken ghost. That would be a great introduction for him. Could we see an Agent Callus at some point? I hope so. Interesting. I'm not dying for it, but I wouldn't mind it. I'd rather see Rex if I had to choose. Did this episode. On to Anakin. If the world between worlds is the start of a Force user's afterlife, it could be that he's dead too. I bet he died on Mustafar Mm. or on the operating table just afterwards. But I kind of doubt that. Or if it is, he'll have no memory of whatever takes place, or the Emperor tortures him so much, or he's tortured too much in his condition that it's basically driven into a small dark recess of his mind. Mm. If he is dead, I hope that's the post-redemption after the return of the Jedi, and he's just taking a form pleasing to Ahsoka. I need to go back and rewatch the episode, but a co-worker who claims to be a Star Wars fan and hasn't watched any of the series said he saw a picture of Anakin from a screenshot and that he's wearing Vader's lightsaber. Did you guys notice that? Okay, that's a lot. Sorry for the length. I'll drop another note after part five. Thanks for the podcast, Russell Hooper. Thanks, Russell. I didn't notice the Vader lightsaber in the, in episode four. Mm. Yeah, me neither. We hey. definitely got it. We got it here. Hey, we hardly even noticed that he said snips uh, That's yeah. true, actually. <laughs> in the last episode. And that it was, was just like, oh my God. There was only like five words of dialogue. But yeah, you're right. We were too busy uh, going, oh my God, oh my God, it's happening. Um, but yes, I, I would say he was because we see him here with uh, with Vader's lightsaber. So uh, it's entirely possible that the screenshot that, uh, that your co-worker saw had him with Vader's lightsaber, right? Um, so. Or someone in Disney leaked the screenshot. Maybe that they really shouldn't have. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Definitely. But some of the theories there, they're they're close, I guess, to what happened uh, within the episode. Here we do have um, Ahsoka going off on her own, leaving behind her and the Ghost uh, crew, who will possibly be preparing for when Thrawn arrives. And I like that um, that Russell's theory aligns with you guys when you were saying that you know that when uh, Thrawn and the Chimera come back through. Uh, the looks on the faces of uh, of the people that Hera has been warning about it are going to be uh, something to behold. Yeah, definitely. It'd be uh, it will be quite satisfying to see. It, mm-hmm. I think um, from the oversight oversight committee, um, <laughs> and I think uh, yeah, I'm really holding out still that we get Zeb here. I think that would be really good. Uh, but again, depending on. Uh, Derek's theory uh, about mm. whether we see even Hera, uh, Chopper, and Jason uh, much for the remainder of the series, then um, who knows? Uh, I would love to see Agent Callus uh, at some point as well. 
Uh, probably more so than Rex, although I always liked Rex and it was Absolutely. good to see Rex here. Yeah. Uh, but Agent Callus was just one of those ones because he was that double agent and I really liked that from Rebels. Absolutely. You know, it was a, a double, it was that red herring to the audience and yeah. ultimately as well, if we get Zeb, maybe we do get Agent Callus as well because they ended off, uh, sort of kind of working together on that ice planet and, and formed a bit of a bond. Yeah, they ended up going off together at the end of uh, at the end of Rebels. Ah. So, yeah. Um, I did really like Agent Callus as well, but um, I think Captain Rex works much better. She, he had such a closer connection with Ahsoka over so many, Definitely. so many seasons of Clone yeah. Wars uh, and was obviously present in live action before. So it's a great little moment to just get uh, having Tamora Morrison here in this episode, in episode five, um, as Captain Rex, just for a moment. Oh, definitely, um, definitely, yeah. completely agree. I'm talking about Agent Callus being relevant for the the Rebels group. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, Russell, for your thoughts. Uh, we'll pop on over to another email, because we got an email in from Darth Von Doom, who says about episode five, greetings, new Republicans. Now that is a lot of Purgle. The shot of the ghost skimming the ocean surface was cool. The score was great, especially the Purgle jump scene. Glad the fleet witnessed the Purgle jumping away with Ahsoka. Perhaps now Hera can convince Leia and Mon Mothma to bring the Senate to heel to approve and support the mission. I still think there's a traitor in their midst. Gino seems to be determined to undermine Hera. Jason's force sensitivity worked nicely into the story. I found it interesting Hera could hear the lightsabers clashing through him. So it was Anakin who pulled Ahsoka into the world between worlds. I saw no aura about him, so not a force ghost. Nice to see a younger version of Ahsoka as well. I fretted a bit when he ignited Vader's blade. I feared she may be tempted to try and save him, but she learned that lesson on her first visit with Ezra. Ahsoka seemed very much changed by the encounter, shedding grey garb for white and smiling more. I can't wait to see the look on Balin's face when Ahsoka shows up. I have a feel- feeling that rematch will have a very different outcome. The Force is strong in you, Darth Von Doom. Ooh, interesting stuff, uh, Darth Von Doom. You are getting Dorothy, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, bringing the Senate to heel sounds very uh, <laughs> it Darth quite imperial. emperor yeah. uh, in, in tone. But uh, like it. yes, it, and with Balin, it will be interesting. I, I'm still in the back of my mind. I do wonder if, you know, given... The references to Earth of the Empire um, and and uh, the Timothy Zahn books, and you have uh, Dark Force Rising. There is a Jedi um, from the series of books. I just can't quite remember his name at the moment, but is one where seemingly n- neutral or possibly benevolent, but the more the the story goes on there is this sense um and he you know you realize that power has corrupted him and there is that sith uh element there and i just kind of wonder whether maybe balin is that replacement um, room to some degree be interesting or maybe even uh shin haiti as well you know just different um mm. because you have uh, Mara Jade as well, another yeah. cool character. So I wonder um, whether Balin may be this older sort of Jedi that has yeah. survived yeah. the, well, the Empire previously. I guess, interestingly, we know that he trained around the same time as Anakin, so he probably did fight alongside Anakin at some point. Um in the Clone Wars. So yeah, good stuff. Hopefully we're, yeah. we're going to see Bailey back uh, next week as well. Thanks, Darth Von Doom. Yeah, thanks, Darth. Still loving the new handle. Absolutely. Uh, we also got an email from Coffee and Vodka who says, Greetings, fellow plot-plodding defenders. It could go anywhere. I know that's better than going nowhere. This pretty much summarizes my thoughts of the series so far. Unless they're adding more episodes or have a season two planned, they'd best hit hyperdrive. So why am I loving this overly short episode trudge fest so much? It's epic, epically epic, felony epic. The details, inferred referential history, special effects, and sparse yet contextually rich dialogue almost make me want to watch all the shows and movies that led us to this point. This is a great series for me. I can only imagine how rewarding it is for someone who knows what's going on and appreciates this Ezra fella as much as the characters do. 
Oh, and space whales, like, totally rule. Five pathetic Padwan pursuing protagonists, frosted mini ginger snips, and bwam bwams out of five. Peace and take care. Coffee and vodka. Love it. Great stuff, coffee and vodka. Um, Yes, it's always better to go anywhere uh, rather than nowhere. And, maybe and they are going to a galaxy far, far away. We're on the pathway to Peridia. They have yeah. started now mm-hmm. on that route. <laughs> but totally head, agree with you. Every time you say that, is you're on the road to nowhere. <laughs> know, well, it says to change nowhere to Peridia. <laughs> okay. You're on the road to Peridia. We have a musical note from uh, yes. Chris. It's Excellent been a while stuff. since I've kind of really like forced our fellow defenders or here their fellow rebels to turn down their headphones and just, like, <laughs> all our fellow rebels have just turned to dust like Maroc from the last uh, from no it's the just last their episode. ears are slowly bleeding now <laughs> I, I'm just amazed it actually sounded like a, a tune Chris I could tell yeah, that that you. was talking heads uh, very good oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much Coffee and Vodka for your thoughts it's really interesting that, that you say that you know if you if you look at it in totality so far the season you feel like nothing's ha- happened but you've enjoyed every single moment yeah. of it you know I'm not exactly with you on that I, I do think there's been a lot Lots of stuff going on this season that has been great fun catching up with these characters and and where they're going. You know, it's been uh, it's been a, a really good journey so far. But you are totally right in the fact that this is epic storytelling and this is felony epic. So I've uh, been su- doing such a great job so far. Excellent stuff. Uh, hopefully next week is going to be just as epic. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hopefully. Thanks so much, Coffee and Vodka. Shall we move over to Facebook? Sarcastically, Richard Blaze says... Still not long enough. <laughs> anyway, that was just freaking amazing. The scenes with Anakin and Ahsoka in the Clone Wars and at the Battle of Mandalore were just taken direct from the cartoons. Loads of callbacks, even with the way they stood next to or looked at each other. Mm-hmm. Loved the little flashes of Vader and the way the dark side cre- kept creeping in. Anyone else catch Ahsoka showing signs of the dark side in the battle and her eyes appearing yellow for a brief moment? Mm, there you go. We discussed this. We will agree to disagree, but I like that they potentially it did potentially happen. Richard went on to say, Elsewhere, with the ships looking in the water, you'd have thought they'd have kept them in first gear and gone a bit slower <laughs> over the water to check, but nope, fifth gear and foot down <laughs> all the way. Love it. Sweeping, sweeping, Great sweeping. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now, going forward, just a theory. How about that's the last we see of Hera and Jason and technically in this universe, Ahsoka? Mm. It could be now pure speculation for me that Ahsoka and Sabine remain trapped in the other universe and are never able to return. Would explain a way. This would explain a way why she's never spoken of or appear in the later stories and why there's no Thrawn. He could be building his empire in the new place. Right, now I'm on to count the minutes until next week's episode. <laughs> Good stuff, Richard. Thanks, Richard. I know he's going to come back, but like I think they will. But I, I do like the idea that maybe they have to go back there. Um, and again, what we're finding out is the galaxy, even this galaxy, far, far away, currently where they are, is still a big galaxy. There's still been... We were led to believe there were no Jedi, um, bef- like, and now we know that there is Jedi post, uh, like Ahsoka did, was around for the whole of the original war. Mm-hmm. Uh, she just was, she's not a Skywalker, so she wasn't talked about during the Skywalker saga yeah. in that bit. She was pre and post, but you know what I mean. So we're going to find out stories, and they don't have to explain anything. I think they've already done that with Cal Kestis to a degree mm-hmm. in C- in the, the second game, which is in lore. So I think what they'll, I don't think they'll, Dave Filoni will copy that, that, oh no, she's stuck on the other side and they, they, they're they never going to come back and they were in this hidden place. I think what they'll do is just explain. Like they'll do an in-universe retcon ex- explanation that will fit nicely into the lore and discussion points we've had to date. Yeah, I, I, I can't see them remaining in the other the other universe. Um, particularly, the, the only thing we really know in the future of of this version of Star Wars, what, what Dave Filoni's story that's being told, is that it will all culminate in a movie with the Mandalorian and the characters here from, from Ahsoka. So I'd say they get back, and I'd say 
uh, Thrawn's going to be uh, following on their heels in some way. So uh, back to this universe or this galaxy. Um, so, but it, but it is an interesting thought that they would Definitely. separate them completely out uh, on the other side of the galaxy. It is a, an interesting theory uh, for sure. So yeah, good stuff uh, on that. And totally with you around the uh, you know fifth gear fuel burning uh, sweeps absolutely uh, as well there was a <laughs> lot of sweeping going on for sure that i had to stop thinking about housework yeah. to be honest but maybe if they'd just done it one time slowly and correctly mm, exactly. <laughs> they wouldn't have wasted as much fuel uh, good stuff thanks so much for that richard uh, dr bob phillips says jonah and the space squid should have been the name in this episode the battle with the slowly turning evil anavader had me wondering if the key battle scenes will play strongly into the future episodes or or just filled out the backstory for folks like me who aren't heavily into the animated series. The turn of Jason, too young to travel galaxies, and anyway his use to the plot has gone, was really well handled. And I did f- very much like the stalling technique of Captain Tava was tell them the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could the whales actually just go for a party with the pals and we end up with with season two being adventures in time and hyperspace with a wandering pod of rebel space plankton feeders and their <laughs> handy Jedi pal. Ooh, definitely playing into a, a Doctor Who ki- kind of uh, kind of Star Wars show there, isn't it, Dr. Pub? Oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> yes, Jonah and the Space Squid uh is a very good title here and certainly if we got the adventures of the space squids slash genetic mutation with a whale um that would accompany it mm. as well yeah <laughs> uh no i mean i i think uh, i'm there with you around captain taver and <laughs> his, his stalling technique uh and I kind of wish Jason was still there. I wish he was going to the galaxy, the other galaxy as well, along with Hera and Chopper, but sadly not. But he has been really well used here. Absolutely. In in terms of Mm. this story, for sure. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Yeah, great stuff, Dr. Bob. Uh, Final piece of feedback for this week's episode comes in from Joe Herbers. Not everybody pleased uh, with this episode. Oh, no. Good to hear another another side uh, to this this, episode. glowing praise that we've been eating on, on, the, on the episode. Uh, Joe Herber says, as someone who's only seen some later Clone Wars and a little of early Rebels, that was slow. Instead of a longer episode, it should have been shorter. If that's all the story they had, I could have skipped so much of them searching around on the planet and dealing with the Republic. Last week was great, and I liked the scene um, of her as a kid. Anakin was good, but overall not great. Bring back the grey force users. Space is big, but apparently the fleet ships happened to show up directly in the path that the whales would take to leave the planet, and they couldn't get out of the way. I assume Filoni wanted cool shots of them mingling, but even setting aside why the ships are there, which is questionable, it made little sense. It seemed like something that works better in an animated show, which seems to happen in this series more than, say, Mandalorian. Thanks, Joe. I think it's just the size, the actual scale of the Purgle as they're leaving the planet. It is an an entire group of them that are leaving, and these three massive ships are surrounding the planet, right? So I guess that would be the reason. They're they're trying to to arrive at the point that they know um, that Hera's there. So I I guess it did look amazing. I guess it's their source point. Because ultimately, it's in 3D space. So they could be coming at it from the bottom. So, Mm -hmm. or the top, or the other side. So it all depends on their starting point uh, and the trajectory of getting to CTOS. So unless there is only one kind of space lane. So I, I I get that point. It's obviously all space lanes lead to, and maybe that's the point, this henge area, because that in and of itself is sharing a space lane <laughs> to, yeah. um, in this case, another galaxy. But Oh, sorry, yes. That's the other thing that I forgot to mention in our notes earlier on, that it was called out earlier on in the season, the whole reason they were able to use this planet for the transport to the other galaxy that they were trying to get to was because that was the Purgle's path to travel that way. It was specifically called out earlier on in the season. It was set up that someone would have to use the Purgle to make that trip, effectively. So yeah. uh, so while Ahsoka may not be 100% sure of that, um, this is the path that they would use to travel. So uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're coming in as uh, the Republic and you're trying to retrieve Hera and trying to retrieve the people that ran away uh, when you said they couldn't do their mission, 
you arrive at the point that you know they're going to be in, right? So, um, yeah, I think I think it makes it makes so. logical sense. I'm sorry this episode didn't work for you, Joe, but um, you know, I, I think it is absolutely in keeping with the with the series so far for me. Uh, anyway, I think it I think it makes total sense, and I I love the time that I spent uh, with how Dave Filoni tells this story in his in his way of of uh, treating these characters um, with their big moments in this in this longer episode. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Here, I saw the cinematic. Filoni that you guys have told me about from Rebels, from kind of the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. like getting some of those shots, but these live action that gave me chills and kind of it was just beautiful. But again, completely understand that's not for everyone every day, every week. Yeah. So and hey, the Grey Jedi's are definitely coming back next week. So oh, God, yeah. don't, you won't have to wait too much longer. Yeah. Uh, just seven more days. Great stuff. Thanks, everybody, for your feedback on this episode of Star Wars Ahsoka. We will be back next week, of course, with our discussion all about Star Wars Ahsoka Episode 6. We'd love if you sent in your feedback to us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. And do make sure you subscribe to the main feed of the podcast over at our website, tvpodcastindustries.com, because we are also covering The Wheel of Time, Season 2, Episode 5 this week, guys, as well. Yes. We certainly are. It is going to be a good one. Yeah, looking forward to it, uh, definitely. And... I guess keep the dials tuned to uh, to Prime Video. Is that what people do now? No, just stick, just stick with Prime Video because we will be coming back for another series on Prime Video at the same time as Wheel of Time when we cover the spin-off to The Boys with Gen V coming out later this month. <laughs> yes. yes. We are very much looking forward to talking about that. We can't talk about it yet. We're very no. much looking forward to talking about it, though. Yes. Dare yes. I say it. And now for something completely different. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. But if you read the comic books, Teenage Kicks, and all that in between. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Can't talk about it yet. <laughs> Looking forward to talking about it, though. As I say, keep subscribed to TV Podcast Industries. You'll get our discussions all about that as well. Thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you again next time. Yes, thank you so much. And we'll see you in a galaxy far, far away very soon. Thank you so much for joining us, fellow Rebels, for part five. Cannot wait to see you for part six of... Ahsoka when we hopefully will get the blue man group and until then keep watching keep listening and keep rebelling bye Her refusal leads to another duel between them, which Ahsoka wins and chooses to live, accepting that she was part of the reason for Anakin's downfall. Except that she wasn't part. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Deciding that she was definitely at fault. (laughs) But I I, I do... Yeah, I I, I wonder about Jace. Because, again, another Force user... Jason? Jason. <laughs> and the wheel Jason warriors. Jason the warriors. <laughs> what yes. Uh, Leia yeah. Organa helping out Hera here. So a uh, nice little nod uh, that she's still working on the side of the rebels, yeah. even though she has to be fo- has to be part of uh, of the Senate. Yeah, yeah. De- definitely. And I still think we'll end up seeing Carrie Ann Moss. Uh, in, in Carrie Ann Moss. Who? <laughs> She, from the Matrix, she'll be coming in with all the guns. We need guns. Lots of guns. <laughs> <laughs> More guns. And I still think we may see a Carrie Fisher at some point in the future. Now, like they've done they've done it before. I know. We know they have. There was mixed feelings. Yeah. Um a, a lot of mixed feelings. Hope. I need to go back and rewatch the episode, but a co walk I need to go back and rewatch the episode. But a co-walker, co-walker, <laughs> co-walker, a worker, a co-walker. Maybe they go for walks at lunch. Like yeah. a Skywalker, but <laughs> Skywalker, that's what's in my head. It's, it's I need the- to go back and re-watch the episode. Bop, bop, bop.